microdose, yeah. Microdose, 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 dose, dose. What's good, y'all? Kush Hayes here coming to you with the newest edition of the Microdose. Folks, I'm sorry to leave you hanging like that last week. As uh, as we say around here, life gets in the way, and life got in the way. We, uh, we had a guest. They got sick. It happens. This week, no new guest either, and I don't want to just sit here on a stool and just ramble on to you for 20, 25 minutes. Those, those episodes are boring. I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. So, we went back into the old archives, the Kush and Kai Microdose Archives, and found episode 50, recorded on November 16th, 2018. It's a fun time. We have officially been doing a year of Kush and Kai at that point, even with the microdoses intact. And uh, subjects that we talk about on this episode are Fantastic Beast 2. We, uh... <laughs> Kai kind of mourns the loss of Stan Lee. We talk about Avatar 2, as well as Bad Boys 3, and much more. The audio wasn't as sophisticated back then as it was now. I believe we were using a Skype link for this, and I believe producer Hakey was on the ones and the twos. But I do want you to know that at some point you'll hear this like, and that is Kai hitting a vape pen, and uh, I don't know why Kai didn't think to do that off mic, but hey, that's what's going on here. So again, Kush and Kai microdose number 50, recorded November 16th, 2018, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. You can find this episode and other Kush and Kai microdoses, as well as Kush and Kai's, on the Kush and Kai RSS feed. It is still available on your Spotify's and your iTunes and your Stitchers. And, uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Kush and Kai. I'm Kush. I'm Kai. Oh, Ooh, God good, damn y'all? it. Wait, do you want to start <laughs> that over? We're not starting that over. Fuck it, this is a microdose! Oh, you've arrived. That's how oh. we do it, baby. That's how we do it. Fuck yeah. Kush, how are you? How you been? It's been a sec. I'm doing well, Kai. How's life with you, man? It's been good, but I, in my normal malaise, have been removed from hearing about what the fucking movies are on there out th- in the world. And I feel like you are the lung of this apparatus where you take it in your alveoli processes it it pulls oxygen out it expels out carbon dioxide and other things but then we are left with how good was that air how good was it and we get a rating i hear you've heard a couple movies what are they sir <clears throat> well old iron lung here is here to tell you that the air in a uh, widows is uh it's tolerable so <laughs> Tolerable. Widows. Widows long is Widows tolerable. Has Tell us, please. Two hours, nine minutes. Uh, I don't feel one minute of it. It's, but it's a very dry movie. And I'm trying to think of why it is. And it's because it's not only a remake of a UK production, but it is, in fact, a remake that. with a UK production. Oh, I did not know this any is, of this. This, this is, is Steve this is, McQueen. This is Liam Neeson. This Dig. is Colin Farrell. This is uh, 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 God damn it. Where's my girl? Robert Duvall is in this. Uh, oh, my shit. girl from um, Cynthia Revo from uh, the the El Royale movie is in this. Oh, like, it's, it's all happening. Jesus. Yeah, uh, everyone is in the scariest dude in this is uh, our boy from Get Out, Daniel Kaluuya. Uh-huh. He is terrifying in this dude i think he, you're gonna remember him playing this character for a very long time uh, yeah. he's the most memorable thing out of this movie um and you you just you're you're fascinated with him and you you, you never know what he's gonna do except oh. that's gonna be probably awful oh no the 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 branding and the trailer for this seemed pretty straightforward it was there's ladies and they've been left in the lurch by their men that were doing things that were not, let's say, super legal. No, they, their, their husbands are all uh, criminals of the highest trouble. proportion. Yeah. And, and um, 
I feel like one direction that Steve McQueen gave uh, Liam Neeson and Viola Davis is uh, it's a, it was like, this is going to be the opening scene of the movie. This, you two are in bed. You're embracing each other. Mm-hmm. Liam Neeson, oh, yeah. I need you to eat her face. Eat, bite her face off. off. I need you to get all of her face. Isn't that romantic? Bite the entire face off. That's what that's what normal interracial couples do. That is what happens. Is the uh, the face the face bite off mm-hmm. is part of it. And we're been we've been kissed into this world, and now maybe some of us are uncomfortable with it. But that's fine. That's fine. The full face bite it leads the movie. In. It's the first thing that happens. It definitely he's definitely painting a picture of the, oh these, these four couples, uh, what what their lives are like. You see, like these two absolutely have like the the, the passion is very much a life in the, in Bite their in their marriage. Bite Whereas John Barenthal, you know John Barenthal, old Shane, John old Barenthal, Hunter. yes, fucking a, yeah, he he's in this for a hot two and a half minutes before he dies, and his, his life is just smack the shit out of the wife. <laughs> Just, oh that's, that's well, the lady beating. They need there. that to be part of the thing. I understand mm-hmm. that. Uh, that's a thing. That's a thing. That uh, that's uh, Elizabeth Debicki, and this woman, when her life was perfect, it's just getting her ass kicked. If not by her husband, by her mother, and it's this. This woman absolutely needs a life change, and that's what Widows provides for her. Uh, what else? Michelle well, Rodriguez. Wait, wait, wait. In a larger sense, did you feel this movie? Did you feel it got start to finish? Would you recommend it? Where are you here? I would actually recommend going back to check out one of the earlier BBC uh, adapt- adaptations. These okay. were mini series over there, so they 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 actually had time to breathe. Like things are just rushed in this movie. Everything just goes very fast for two hours and ten oh. minutes to the point where. The widows haven't even planned out their heist uh, until like the last half hour of the movie. Like they're just oh. gathering all the tools together, and they're like, "Okay, now we need to dro- do a dry run of this." And just like, um, I don't know, Isn't, ladies. Oh, that seems like it was in the title. <laughs> yes. Oh. Uh, how, however, uh, you have no choice but to compare this to Ocean's Eight, and the the threat of danger is real in this. The consequences are real in this. You actually like hope they pull this off and you don't know that they will so mm. having said all that yeah I, w- I would check this out but i i'm more inclined ah. to check out one of the earlier adaptations of the 2002 cast for the Ameri- uh, the english production sounds great dig dig so th- i did not know that this was an overseas production that came here um and then yeah it. i am naturally disposed to just say like well yeah where did this what was the source material where did this come from so i'm I'm of the same mind, and then it sounds like you're recommending the same deal. How many blueberries did you give this out of six? Three out of six. Three out of six. Okay. Yeah. It's a strong three, but uh, as opposed to our next movie, uh, Fantastic Beast 2. Please. Oh, wait. Look, we, we appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Kush, thank you for your input on uh, Widows. I was super curious about that, but... Uh, I would also very much like to know where you are in the Fantastic Beast cycle, because the Fantastic. first one you you uh, went out of nowhere went out of nowhere proclaimed that the Fantastic Beasts were better than the rest of the Harry Potter movies. I stand by that. You stand by this. I stand You're by that. Firm. Even with this this second one, I still oh, like the tell first me, one tell better. Me. However. <sighs> Those movies, even when the 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 students of Hogwarts are get, starting mm-hmm. to become adults and they're be- becoming less and less children, those are still children's movies. And while these are not adult movies, they are more mature. There's um, there's no sense of fantasy or wonder. And maybe that's maybe that's the draw. Maybe that's where they're going wrong with this because not everyone likes these. I get why. Mm-hmm. This second one was a hodgepodge. It felt like it was thrown together. However. All my favorite characters were there. Uh, I'm going to liken this to Their Empire Strikes Back, despite the fact ah, we have three more of these coming. Good. I but, dig that. No, I appreciate where you're going. And they, yeah. no, this is, listen, it's the Wild West because there's no, there's zero precedent for any of these happening. So, yeah. what, however, these come together is what are people seeing anything? For you to say that is impressive. <laughs> this is oh, Their oh. Empire Strikes Back. 
I am paying attention and I'm curious. And listen, I hate to say it. Everybody, I apologize that I have to take uh, Kai apology that I have to take it back to this first spot. A Kai apology. A Kai apology. Is this, is this movie? Because we have a young, we have a young Dumbledore. Mm -hmm. Is he a gay young Dumbledore? It's hinted at, but it's never Go! really confirmed. Come. They, they, so ah! let me explain. Let just me explain. do it. Just do it. Yeah. And they, they almost get there, and I feel like we will get there in the third one because they're, they leaned heavy into it. So here's the thing. Um, Dumbledore is like, hey, Newt Scalamander, uh, I need you to fight Johnny Depp. And he's like, well, you're, you're a lot stronger than me, Dumbledore. Shouldn't you fight Johnny Depp? He's like, no, <laughs> right? no, no. I can't fight Johnny Depp. This isn't. One, this isn't my movie. And two, I need you to fight Johnny Depp. Just trust me. Go. <laughs> How does that work out? Turns out that they made a blood pact. And uh, Oh, no. By the way, there's a lot of bureaucracy going on in Wizarding World uh, mm -hmm. that I, I'm, uh, I'm a little stale upon. Oh. It's, it, it's there. It's nothing to do about it. Just it's, it's there. At some point, Dumbledore is getting questioned. He's like, you, you and uh, Johnny Depp here, you guys were closest brothers is like <laughs> well i say we were closer than brothers actually <laughs> of course obviously so obviously. and then we, we go to that mirror we're introduced to in the first harry potter and 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 young dumbledore is looking longingly into this mirror at, at his at his youthier self and youthier johnny depp kind of embracing and there, oh, what could have been? Oh. An enchanted amulet that carries the drop of each of their blood together. Oh, no. The <laughs> misunderstandings, the youthful indiscretions. Oh, the young Dumbledore, gay Dumbledore. We don't know. Maybe it's there. Maybe it's not. You know, uh, oh. Fantastic Beast Part 3 promises full, hardcore gay fun. Fantastic Beasts. <laughs> oh, boy. Like some that you have never imagined before. So did you see that? Wait, did you see that movie? Which one? The Fantastic Beasts. I two. saw the first one. And saw part, just got out part two today. Just got a part two. Well, uh, yeah. Would you recommend part two? Where are you with that? You, I, I don't have to recommend it because if you're a Harry Potter fan, you're just going to go see it. It's, uh, it's inevitable. I say the first one is stronger. Uh, this gets a week three out of six. But it's uh, there's stuff there. It's, it could be a half hour shorter. It's it's very there's a lot of beautiful effects in this. For some reason, one of Johnny Depp's spells is tarping all of France, and then the tarps just go away for no reason. Like characters don't know what they're doing until after it's happened, and then there's this goddamn exposition that, again. That that's part of the thirty minutes that could be cut. So you don't need my recommendation. You're gonna yeah. go see it, anyways um but yeah it's uh it, we are left with a cliffhanger and shit is serious oh damn well um i have been out on that however i have to say my daughter um who's eight mm -hmm. just finished a uh, chamber of secrets uh okay. in full book form and uh we rewarded her with uh an iphone 4 <laughs> Ooh, a four. Yeah, four. And it doesn't have a SIM card or it's not activated, so it can't be like a full cell phone. It's just basically an iPod. However, she can roam around and take pictures and videos and do X, Y, Z. And, it's and as she, long as she can access the Wi-Fi, it's good. I have, yeah, exactly. And I have in a back end, like, hooked her into the Potter world because now Daddy appreciates that she wants to be about potter and then also she gets these things so it is in on that um geez all right well moving on to this microdose thank you for summing up these two movies for us um i'm yeah. gonna have to see the grindelwald movies at some point and, at some point um, that's coming that's definitely in your future buddy that's coming. That's coming. Oh, oh speaking but, of the future, the, at one point, Johnny Depp's whole uh, speech about why we should rebel against man and the humans and the, the, the people who don't do magic. Uh, World War II is coming. So yes. I, I yes. remember you, you having a big question about that, and uh, that's, that's what's up. Oh, wait, that's at the end of the movie? They say World War II is coming? That, that's his whole thing. He, he gathers all of the wizards within Paris, and he's just like, Yo, these guys are about to fuck shit up, and we need to get a handle on this right now. 
And some people are like, yeah, cool. And other people are like, mm, I mean, nuclear bomb ain't that bad. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, I understand where they're coming from, but one, once they see it, I would imagine that they try and solve uh, all the world's problems, and then also world hunger, and then child cancer. I, I would, for Saint Jude especially, I would imagine that they would be dialed in for those things. Speaking um, of Saint Jude, buddy, do you remember we're a benefiting Saint Jude's Children's Research Hospital this month as part of our one-year anniversary? Absolutely. And for the next 15 days, you can still, uh, you out there in Radio Land, podcast land, you can give to fundraising.saintjude.org backslash Christian Kai. Please We're only do. trying to raise $2,000, and you're going to be entered to win a special gift from one of Please our sponsors do. to be determined to be announced. Please do. Uh, St. Jude's does a lot of good work. All right. As a bookend for that, uh, I have to move on to some... Entert- and look, thank you, Kush, for uh, all of, uh, the movie reporting because that you are our guy on the fucking street. You are there. You're experiencing it. You're in those things. Thank you. Uh, hey, you we, know, you got to love what you do. We, we need to know those things. Um, moving on. In the microdose, uh, the first thing I have to say for entertainment news, fucking, we haven't talked about it. Stan Lee has passed. <clears throat> That's true. Yeah, that was just uh, that was on Sunday, right? Sunday or in the last four or five days. I have mm-hmm. to say, it could have been in the last ten years or so. Mm-hmm. He I've, was I've been not... preparing myself for this day for a while, which is why I'm not as sad as others. He but, was uh... got everybody. He was old. Yeah, he was. He, his appearances in the movies were not substantive. They were. They were a cameo to just that guy. We get it. We love They're him. They're fun. He's They're great. Fun. Yes. They're fun. They're in there. However, the time has passed. He was already very old. He has lived more lives than many of us ever will. Yeah. A couple of great not ones. Not to say too. like we shouldn't feel bad or taken from that he is gone, but he's gone, guys. Like, yeah. I, it, the the uh, ov- there was an overabundance of uh, chronicles to Stan Lee this week, and I, the cynic in me was just like, "Well, where were you when he was publishing his comic books?" So, yes. uh, uh, most of them weren't actually born, uh, to be fair. But just uh, yeah, that that popped in my head once or twice this week. Um, another he, thing, again, he was just he was old. He was old. He went through. And there were a bunch of disputes about where characters came from, and that went that that passed through. We sorted that out, but yeah, I uh, I think the one thing I will two things like thank you, Stan. You shepherded this period through. Uh, we got to see all these characters and how they played out. Mm-hmm. And then the second would be he is. Um, I, I, I just in terms of uh, people that have been in movies that have grossed the most. If you took just his appearances in Marvel movies, he does take the crown for in the most movies that have. Uh, you know what I mean? Like in aggregate, he has been in movies that have grossed Done in billions ever. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> him, yeah. and Sam Jackson in the same movie too. Totally. But not just the single move, but just like over time, like he has, because he has been in there and backdoor that is impressive alternative from his um, station, which is just, I I don't know how they made that decision or why, but uh, yeah, it's important in the movie lexicon because this doesn't seem like it's going to stop anytime soon. Is it like, this is just going to keep going. (laughs) Uh, it's going to be like the Western where eventually, if we're not already, we will be oversaturated with uh, comic book properties and then we'll just move on to something else. There it is. Yeah. All right. Uh, as, as, uh, as cynical as I like to be, I was watching uh, the double toasted YouTuber. Uh, they were talking about this as well. And then the final 30 seconds of the show, they played this, uh, cell phone footage of him at some comic convention and someone's like stan can you please say excelsior 
and and I'm not going to do the impression, but he did, and I got a little misty eye. So I, I'm just throwing that oh, out there. Man. That happened. But yeah, um, was a good um, dude. Moving on. Definitely Stanley, good guy. Or, yeah, I mean, whatever you want to believe. Like, we're, we're on the good guy category. Moving on. <clears throat> I wanted to say James Cameron has announced he has rap production on both of the Avatar sequels that are Eight happening. Eight years too late. Jeez, um, what? I, I don't know what I'm expecting out of these or what's going to happen for the audience at large, but... They're, I imagine they're going to look very beautiful, and that's all I can. They'll be gorgeous. They'll be great in 3D, and then you'll be like, "Yeah, was that okay?" Or, or that, maybe even 4D. Maybe this is the yeah, 4D. 4D. Yeah, they'll follow you into your life. They'll be your home assistant for a while. Um, they're underwater, and then there's a I I don't know what the other one is, but. This is a big thing for James Cameron. Like he is, he's, he's all about Avatar right now. Yeah, he has been putting off other projects just to get this Avatar thing going the last decade. And if these two are as successful as everyone is thinking they will be, despite not everyone being excited for them, there's two more coming after that. Mm-hmm. So those are guarantees, unless they just horribly bomb. Which I, I hope they're question. all tied together we have discussed personally that it would be great with he gets through the first two and then the third one he loses his mind and then it is set in 1920s chicago <laughs> uh, during prohibition like that would be fantastic That's where an episode of star trek yes that would be great yeah oh that would be actually voyager era because uh next generation they were more into the the flashbacks with um uh, you know, uh, 17th century England, or maybe 18th century, where they they were focused on uh, Jack the Ripper and other things. But um, or or um, or uh, uh, Watson and Holmes. Anyway, uh, outside of that, <clears throat> we have to move on to the next thing: uh, Godzilla versus King Kong. Now that now you're talking, buddy. That's something I'm excited about. What do this we know? This is happening. It sounds like they're making this. Is this oh, real? They, is this real? Because I'm yeah. excited. I want this to happen. No, no. That's that's where this was going. They they did they did that Godzilla one in San Francisco, and then we had Kong last summer. And depending on how well that did, it did very well. By the way, we're yeah. getting King Kong versus Godzilla, and that's that's been the plan for the last five years. So, by the way, we've had King Kong versus Godzilla before, so this isn't anything new. It is, but wasn't that one the last Godzilla versus King Kong I saw was like in the 1960s, like the early 60s, where it's claymation puppets and they're kind of fighting and it's doing whatever. Like, what does that look like now? Because I like that, but Godzilla to me seems way. It's like. It's like Superman vi- fighting Spider-Man. Like Superman mm-hmm. is way overpowered over Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Like Superman could just grab Spider-Man, break him into two pieces, and then throw one of the pieces into the sun. Do you know what I mean? Like it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't seem fair in the same way like Godzilla could spray King Kong with radioactive breath. And then pummel hit. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't seem fair in that way. Like, what are we talking about here? Well, one thing I do know is coming out. So we, we're getting, we're not getting King Kong Godzilla this summer or next summer, I guess. Summer 2019. We're actually getting Godzilla 2. And that's where we're getting Mothra. 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 And I want to say Ghidra is coming in as well. Oh, is Ghidra coming in as well? Yeah. I want to see Ghidra. I'd be down to see all of the people. Yeah. Come on back, everybody. No, they're, Warner Brothers is trying to take this new <clears throat> this new Godzilla universe serious, this new uh, King of the Monsters. They're, they want this to be good. So, um, well, so good, I would say. Is this going to be like a major release? Like, is this going to be in, in studio? Like, we're going to have it? For sure, it's happening. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. well, yeah, because it's hard to discern because you hear about different... Um, initiatives or films and they're going to do a series and like you're not sure where it's going but 
to to hear like, oh no, Godzilla's gonna do X Y Z. It's like, is this gonna be in movies or is it gonna be in a comic series that you've opted out for? Oh god, if they bitch out like that, that would be awful. Well, no, yeah. th- I've I've everything I've heard is this is all leading to Godzilla King Kong the movie. Oh shit! Well, I would I'm gonna see that. That will happen if it hits American shores. Uh, real <laughs> quickly, Bad Boys Three. Will Smith and <laughs> yes, Bad Boys Three with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Lawrence, uh, it has the title "Bad Boys for Life," and life is spelled with a three instead of the e. Oh my God, this looks like a disaster. <laughs> I love the first Bad Boys. I did, thought the second Bad Boys was an hour too long, and that's when they were starting to give Michael Bay a lot more freedom. Yes. Um, this third bad boys has been in and out of production. So the fact that now, now Martin Lawrence and Will Smith are actually sending Instagram photos from the set. It's, it's definitely happening, but I was, it seems like I was hoping we had put this behind us like a year ago. And I I guess we did not. Nothing dies. Like you said, Kai. Yeah, no, nothing dies. Roseanne, Murphy Brown, bad boys three. Oh yeah, it's happening. I don't want it to. We don't need it. No one needs it. However, the summer slot has something for Columbia open and they're going to fucking jam it in there. Yeah. Well, there you go. Enjoy that. Well, bad boys three. Yeah. And for, for you, bad boys three uh, enthusiasts, you'll be treated to a bad boys TV spinoff starring a uh, Gabrielle union reprising her role from part two. That's, wow. That's, that's wow. coming out this fall. A treat. Everybody enjoy. Get in there. All right. Moving on from that, which was already sad. Um, <sighs> Movie Pass has been passed on to another uh, company that took it on, and they are now uh, experiencing a loss, a uh, triple the loss anticipated uh, oh amid God. the subscriber dip. And I don't understand why. Any movie pass subscriber would be on board currently, but I don't know how far past triple they could go. But is total, you know what I mean? Like total loss? Like what is that? What does that look like for the subscriber numbers? If you're still a movie pass subscriber, I was once a movie pass subscriber. I then saw the writing on the walls. I thus canceled my subscription. That was three months ago. I haven't regretted it yet. Apparently, I can come back in six more months. However, the rest of you that are still sticking with this subscription, you fuckers are masochists, okay? You only, only joy you get out of life is hurting yourself. And that's what you're doing by keeping your membership with this company here. Because, Kai, all day long I see on the uh, Facebook feeds is, yeah, so-and-so movie says it's available, but then I get to the theater and it's gone. Or... Uh, this movie is available that I don't want to see, and it's only available at nine twenty at night <laughs> and eleven fifteen in the morning. Like it, there, and I read, uh, yeah, they, they, I've, other movie pass uh, programs have had problems with with these too. Yeah, this doesn't work, guys. They tried; it was a, a noble effort. It was interesting, but yeah, this is it's not happening. <clears throat> movie pass gave a lot of other people great ideas cinemas uh, like you said having some problems here but amc a list they saw they saw the model they and they perfected it and it's i want to say it's going strong but the news will speculate otherwise uh alamo draft house they're getting in on their own subscriptions soon uh that's going to be a lot of fun just go to the alamo once a week five times a week whatever that'll be but that that is coming but Movie Pass needs to turn in. It's it's time to put yeah, the horse down. Gosh, there, yeah. The people that bought them experienced a triple loss. It could that have been because they were paying below market rates for all the ticket prices? Oh uh, I think gosh. I think the brand is just tainted. I think Movie Pass, quote unquote, is tainted. All right, two more two more items before we move on here. Break it down. Netflix Netflix is testing a cheaper mobile only subscription tier where you can watch stuff just on mobile uh before a different rate. I think okay. there's a ton of people that yeah, this is uh 
yeah, yeah there's this, an audience this, for that yeah. There's an actual yeah. demographic for that, and you'll. Those aren't the folks who watch movies on the bus. The, those, those are your. I'm trying to get through Orange Is the New Black. You know, just twenty minutes at a time. Dig, yeah. There are people that are there. Um, I agree with that. And then last, do you have any price points on that? What's up? Are there any price points on that available? Or Not that... yet. No, they okay. haven't announced anything. But I feel like they'd be fair in terms of what that is because. If something like that comes up, it feels to me like they know that a certain segment of XYZ membership does this and they know what that would look like. So Mm -hmm. it would already be reasonable to that audience. So, um, yeah, I dig that. Anyway, the last thing is we've been following this. We enjoy the Uncanny Valley, but Alita Battle Angel. (laughs) I'm getting kind of stoked for Alita Battle Angel. I am kind of stoked, too. Trailer three, and they pushed it back, but trailer number three. Not a good um, trailer. Honestly. Not a good trailer. However, it enlightened. I didn't see this before. Kush, there's a city above. Mm-hmm. There is a wondrous fantasy world above that lives like normals. They live like, they live like everybody that should, oh. right? Mm-hmm. But Alita was cast off from this city and mm. put down there. That's right. She was left in Mexico. And so Christoph Waltz found her in Mexico and cre- recreated her. That's what this movie is about. But I hadn't seen that until I had seen that trailer. Mm. Is that a problem for this movie? <laughs> Should it be? I don't know. You very well know it could be. <laughs> uh, I think we would get dogs barking about that now like people when scarlett johansson's name was just attached to ghost in the shell we hadn't even seen a screenshot yet and people were calling for her head i think i think this is not even on people's radar or they're okay with no that. well is it <laughs> i mean pe- people do go to mexico and sometimes they decide to live there christoph waltzes and everyone else i too. actually have known a few people that have gone there and then moved yeah there. that's the thing yeah. Yeah, you you don't have to be Mexican to live in Mexico. It's okay. no, of course. And, and, that, that's not Mexicans what we're saying. That's not what I was saying. Oh, okay. That what are you saying, what buddy? Saying. Right. What are you saying? I was just making the inference that if if you are the battle angel and you mm-hmm. are moving there, mm-hmm. do you need eyes that are that big? <laughs> <laughs> anyway i forgot what i was saying all right everybody thank you for joining Kush and kai fucking that's been the microdose like we went through the things fucking thank you for joining us i had a great uh, time guy thanks for having me uh kids thanks for downloading check us out twitter at Kush and kai check us out again on twitter at bosley network oh the boss network all right dudes thank you much and uh yeah please come on back soon all right rock on Kush. Rock on, Kai. Bye. From the Bosnet family.